for another Burlington Parks and Recreation update with our Burlington Parks and Recreation Director, Brendan Egan. Brendan, how are you doing today? Good, Robert. You caught me out on the road today. Well, Brendan is out and about today while I'm back here at home. I know last week I was at BCAT, so we're both in different locations today. Let's start by talking about the summer programs and how's it going so far. So far, so good. Um, you know, as I've mentioned before, the program staff has really spent a lot of time leading up to um, the start of programs, going through all the guidance, making sure we were prepared and able to operate our programs. Um, although they're modified, they're still um, fun and safe. Um, and we, we feel they're enjoyable for our uh, participants, for the residents. And it's really gone very well uh, the first couple of days, the drop-off procedures pick up. Kids are out there. They're all wearing their mask, and they're still having fun. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a very positive um, site to, to look at, you know, check out programs, seeing the kids interacting with each other with masks and having a good time. And just talk a little about the, the precautions you guys are doing in the department and the summer programs during phase three. So uh, going along with all of our, all of our uh, programs, there is uh, strict um, cleaning and sanitation guidelines uh, that we have to follow um, that, that are being, um, that are put in place and are being followed in each of the programs. Our maintenance staff is, um, you know, once a week, uh, sanitizing the um, high touch areas of the playgrounds, um, the bathrooms at Rahanas and at Simons Park are being cleaned daily. Simons is being cleaned three times because of the number of people there and in, in the program club Simons that goes on there. And then we are also um, all of our portable units that are in in the uh, parks where we have programs. They are cleaned once a week thoroughly by the company and then. We are um, sanitizing them daily with a with a uh, spray approved uh, as a COVID-19 approved uh, solution. Excellent. And Brennan, talk a little about the waiting pool and how people can register for that. I know that's in the process. Yeah, so we, we opened the waiting pool on Monday, July 6th. We have put out a um, code red message last week and it's out on our social media. Um, we're not doing waiting pool passes this year. So you, um, the office is closed to residents, so you, you can't come to the office and pick up a waiting pool pass. But we are um, doing reservations online for the waiting pool. Um, we, we have uh, set aside six spots up at the waiting pool um, so we can have families with up to um, four to five people, um, you know, that can go into each spot. And we have six spots up there. So we can have, you know, 20, 24 to 29 people. Um, plus we, we have a, um, we have to hold a spot for our supervisor up there. So we can have up to 30 there and um, they get a 45 minute time slot um, starting at the top of each hour. And then um, once that 45 minutes is up, we ask them to exit the, the pool. It's all one way. So they come in, go to their spot and then they can, you know, access around the pool just one way. Um, then they'll leave. Our uh, supervisor will sanitize the gate and any high touch areas, uh, the railings. There's a couple benches, and um, the next group will be allowed in. You know, we do encourage people if you have questions on how how that is going to happen um, on on the whole process. There, give us a call in the office. You know, we're there Monday through Friday, eight thirty to four thirty and we can answer um, questions for you. Excellent. And Brennan, just talk a little about the recreational sports and the guidelines that were released by the governor this week. It didn't uh, completely open up all sports for, for uh, play. Um, you know, in, in phase two, the uh, youth baseball was a, were able to, um, and softball were able to practice um, doing skills and drills and in some of the other sports. But when they got to phase three, they uh, divided them into risk categories. So there's low risk, moderate risk, and high risk. And um, obviously, the more contact that's involved in a sport, the higher it was placed in the risk categories. 
So uh, baseball and softball are allowed to, to do some games now. Um, and we've worked with BBSA to make sure that their, their operation plans allow or, or take into consideration all of the guidelines. Um, social distancing is uh, still a big deal. So when the teams are off on their benches, they're supposed to remain six feet apart with a face mask on. Um, when they're at bat or on the bases, they have to have a face mask on. If they're playing the field and they can social distance, um, you know, they should wear a face mask, but they're not required to at that point. Um, and, uh, you know, the spectators are supposed to sp uh, space themselves out as well and be socially distant. Um, so uh, there's also uh, levels of play. Um, there's three levels of play which is, you know, scrimmages and, and practices. Um, and then they have some with, with some games and then some tournaments. So um, there's four levels actually. Um, and then uh, they're allowed to certain le risk levels. So the low and moderate are allowed to do certain things. And then the high risk sports, um, you know, like football, lacrosse, um, rugby, wrestling, basketball, they're, they're not allowed to do any games or competition. Adults, um, adult softball is allowed. Um, they can't, any sport that's for uh, people 18 and over, so adult sports, um, they can't have spectators. Um, they, they can, you know, adult basketball league, if they wanted to have a practice, they could, but they could only do drills. They couldn't, they couldn't play one-on-one, -on -one um, or do one-on-one -on -one drills or two-on-two -two or whatever, and they can't play a game. So um, it, it's really, it's limited, but they're, you know, they're, the state I really think is proceeding cautiously. And, and uh, you know, I hope that pays off in the long run. And lastly, Brennan, just talk a little about what do you hope to see as we continue with these summer months? I'd like to see some updated uh, camp and recreation guidelines, you know, maybe, maybe, um, you know, allow for um, some of our groups to mix. So we have, you know, like eight groups of 10, um, up to 10 in our Club Simons program, and they have to stay separate from each other. So you can't have any any mixing of, they call them cohorts, you can't have any mixing there. You know, maybe, maybe some loosening up of that. So, you know, some of the groups could participate in an activity against each other or with each other, um, you know, some some uh, loosening of, of the guidelines maybe a little as we proceed, I'd like to see. But also, you know, I want to see people out following the guidelines that the state has put out and enjoying themselves. You know, I'll say it again. I've said it a couple times in our in our talks. Short term loss of some of our, um, you know, typical expectations of what we can do and can't do for a long term gain. Um, you know, a little short-term suffering for the betterment going forward. Brendan, I want to thank you for coming on for another Burlington Parks Recreation COVID-19 update, even though you're out and about and checking how everybody's doing. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I was able to uh, to pull over and, and do this interview. Well, Brendan, we'll see you next time and have a great day. You bet. We'll see you.